Okay, so th thank you very much, uh, and thank you for your attendance to, to this session. Uh, I am Pedro Muñoz Merino. Um, yeah, th this is the, the, the first slide. Um, uh, I am Pedro Muñoz Merino from the Carlos III University of, of Madrid, and I'm going to present our work about uh, how to infer uh, some uh, learning information from uh, low-level data in, in a pilot experiment that, that we have done uh, at our university. Well, nowadays, uh, we have available a big amount of data. Uh, sometimes we are overwhelmed with such uh, amount of data. And uh, the problem is that uh, sometimes uh, the information, the data is there, but it's not easy how to interpret. And uh, for stakeholders, it's not easy how to take advantage of all the potentiality of this data. Uh, in, uh, when watching uh, a tennis uh, match uh, in the last uh, Davis Cup, uh, I remember that the reporter in, in some moment uh, wanted to explain a very pretty graph about how the match was going on. But the reporter uh, was not able to do this, this explanation because all the data was there, but uh, he, even if, if he, even, uh, he was an expert, but was not able to, to explain all, all of this data. Uh, well, indeed, uh, for, for example, for, for, uh, for tennis, the, there are some uh, nice tools like Protocol Tennis that uh, allows you uh, to obtain some information of the matches that uh, trainers, and, uh, coaches, and players can take advantage of them in order to try to improve the performance. And in the learning area, it's also interesting to have the same outcome uh, to know how to improve uh, learning or how learning is going on. Mm, in, in this study, uh, we focus on the Khan Academy platform. And the Khan Academy is a non-profit organization created by Salman Khan uh, that provides uh, a set of short uh, lessons online and uh, in University Carlos III of Madrid, we have used this platform. Uh, we make uh, our own instance of, of the Khan Academy platform for what is called as uh, zero courses. Zero, uh, zero courses, specifically, we apply this in a physics course, uh, are remedial courses for students that have just registered at the university and they are going to start in a first course of, of, a, of a grade. But um, these students don't have the key concepts about that they need the previous concepts, for example, in this case, for physics. Uh, we made a pilot experiment in, in this course with more than 100 students, but uh, about, uh, 66 interact uh, enough with, with the platform. And well, uh, this is an example of, of video. Students uh, had to uh, follow the methodology of flipping the classroom. So uh, students need to watch some videos and do some exercise before they go to the face-to-face -face lessons. Uh, there were uh, a total of 27 videos. Uh, this is um, an example of, of exercise in the Khan Academy platform about the uh, unclined pl plane. And, uh, well, here the students uh, can make different attempts. Uh, if a student gets stuck, uh, he can request for several hints or watch related videos. Uh, another thing is that these exercises are parametric. So, in order for a student to obtain the proficiency, the student should do the exercise several times and without requesting for hints. Uh, and the exercise is going to change uh, some variables, some parameters in, in, different, uh, in different attempts. 
Khan Academy also introduced uh, gamification elements uh, like uh, badges, so students uh, can obtain different badges for doing different actions on the platform. Well, all, all of this environment with videos, exercises, uh, gamification elements is a rich environment to uh, take analytics and uh, the, the Khan Academy provides a learning analytics module that is going to provide a low level but also higher level information about the learning process. Uh, let, let's see some examples of the learning analytics module provided by the Khan Academy. Uh, here, for example, there is a list of students and the list of skills, and we can see if a student is proficiency in one skill, of he, if he has started or not uh, for this skill, and so on. And there is also a list with all the skills and uh, the different uh, number of students that are in a different state for this skill. For example, uh, we can detect with this if it's an uh, exercise activity is uh, well designed or, or not. This is another example of the learning analytics module for, for the Khan Academy. Uh, here we have information about uh, the different attempts in an exercise. We can know the time when the exercise is accessed, uh, what the student is going, has answered, uh, if the student requests for a hint previously, watch a video, and, and so on. Very detailed information. This is just uh, two examples, uh, but the learning analytics module of Khan Academy uh, provides much more information. And what we have done is uh, to extend this module in order uh, to cover uh, other parameters uh, that were not uh, covered in, in the Khan Academy. And we have divided the parameters in four groups. Uh, the correct progress on the platform, the total use uh, of the platform, the time distribution of the use of the platform, the gamification habits of students, and the exercise solving habits of students. So first of all, uh, uh, the, some stakeholders in the university want to know if uh, which of these students are well prepared in order to go for the face-to-face -face lessons. Because the, this was an, ex, an experience for the students and they should do some activities before the face-to-face -face lessons. So in this way, uh, there should be a computation of uh, regarding the topics, the videos, the exercises, and how the students are doing the, this in the platform. Well, with this information, then uh, we, we can set some conditions in order to know which students are well prepared so that teachers and, and people in university can know which students uh, will be prepared for these face-to-face -face lessons. In this case, with, with these conditions, only 12 students did a correct progress on, on the platform. Well, it's also important to take into account that in this first pilot experience, uh, it was a voluntary uh, activity for the students. Next year, it will be mandatory and only students that uh, complain with the conditions will be able to go to the face-to-face -face lessons. Next question that uh, a teacher can, can ask is, well, but to a students that did a correct progress or that had a similar level on the platform, who of them was more efficient in their learning? In this case, for, for, for this type of measures, uh, we, 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 we see the repetition in watching videos, the repetition in uh, doing exercises, or the time that a student has spent in doing exercises. So maybe two students, for example, did correctly in the same way, but one of them did uh, much more quickly the, the same tasks. And some uh, graphs can be presented la like this, in which in the, the horizontal line is the average of performance of the student in the classroom. And then the, here we can see easily the students that has a strong performance 
o el low performance. Another thing between the students that did incorrectly in the platform, we can ask, do these students uh, do this? Did these students do enough effort on the platform or didn't they use enough? And for this case, we have uh, several parameters in order uh, to, to compute the total use of the platform, involving, uh, again, videos and exercises. So, for example, in the uh, pilot experiment of, of the last year, we uh, we calculate that eight out of the 44 students that didn't do correct progress make an, a considerable effort. So for these students, for example, a type of recommendations uh, or, or more attention can be paid because they are doing some effort on the platform, but they uh, didn't solve the exercises, for example, correctly. Well. Uh, regarding the total use, uh, if, if we correlate the, the total time in this experiment with, with these four uh, variables, we can see that there is a correlation in all of them with more than 99%. Uh, for example, uh, this can mean that uh, only with the total time spent on the platform can be a, a good predictor, for example, uh, for, for uh, how the students are going to do the exercises. Um, another measure about the total use was regarding the use of optional items. So there are some optional items in the Khan Academy platform, like set goals or update the profile, that uh, students were not informed about them, and, but some of them used them. Uh, 17 of these students used this uh, optional functionality. And we also correlate this uh, use of, of the optional functionality with three variables, but we didn't find any correlation. It was surprising, for example, not to obtain a correlation with the recommended explorer profile. Uh, this recommender or explorer profile was computed as the percentage of times that the student followed the recommendations of resource of the Khan Academy platform. So it seems that students that use the optional functionality might be uh, more related to the profile of, of the explorer, but it was not the case in, in this experiment. About the time distribution of, of the use of the platform, some questions that, that we can solve with, with uh, these parameters are if the students are doing a constant learning during all the days, or if the students are working more in some uh, periods of time of the day, or if they work in a more efficient way in some periods of time. Here there is also a graph in which uh, some of this information can be, uh, can be seen. Now, relating to the gamification, uh, the parameters that we calculate uh, were related to the questions if uh, students that uh, are, are doing exercises, if these students do exercises because of the gamification elements or not. For example, uh, one student uh, might do many, many exercises, but he cannot obtain any badges. So um, in this case, this student is not motivated by the gamification elements. And finally, uh, other measures were for the to, uh, to calculate the exercise solving habits. So we took uh, some parameters uh, from the literature and we adapt them to the Khan Academy framework such as the hint avoidance, the hint, um, um, uh, the, the video avoidance, um, the hint abuse, or the unreflective uh, users. So uh, we calculate these measures, uh, we, we correlate, and, and these correlations uh, make sense that there were some that were significant and another were not significant. 
So finally, um, as, as a summary, uh, we have calculated several measures in the Khan Academy platform in order to infer higher level information from low level data of events uh, and so on. So uh, th that's it. Thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to answer to try to answer any questions. Hi. How did you operationalize hint abuse? Um, uh, about interviews with the students or teachers, or uh, the the hint abuse metric you pr you had a slide ago. Um. Oh, you were there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, so sorry. The question is how the. Okay, the hint abuser. So, yeah, in, on one hand, uh, it, we, we have to consider that in the Khan Academy platform, uh, a user can, uh, can have a problem, an exercise, and then maybe he answers incorrectly. So, there can be several attempts. And for each attempt, there is a, a loop la, like this. And the f in the first attempt, uh, in the calculation, it's like uh, to have a, a, a weight of 0 0.5. In the second, is uh, one out of four, and, and so on. So the first attempt is the one with the more weight for the calculation of, of, this, uh, of, this study, of these parameters. And then, for example, uh, it was about the, the hint of avoidance, or so uh, we, we go and, and uh, if the user answers correctly, then the, the parameters are not increased because the user has answered correctly. But if the user answers incorrectly, then uh, it, 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 does, it, it, it is the same if the user says yeah, uh, if, the, um, if the user has seen the related video or not. In any case, uh, we are. Uh, it's going to be asked if the user asks for hints. And in this case, we compute here the, the hint avoidance uh, is going to be increased, uh, this, this parameter. And, and for the hint abuse, uh, what we compute is that if the student in some moment um, has the, uh, we, we see if the student um, with the information we have uh, should uh, be an expert on the topic. And depending on, on this, if, if she should know the answer, but, uh, but is asking for hints, then it's going to be computed as hint abuser. Because the hint abuser, for example, is not in, in this graph. Okay, I, I have a question. Uh, it's regarding the gamification elements. Mm, I mean, can you say something else about it? Uh, I mean, have you track if the students really go to the dashboard of budgets and they check it and if they really feel motivated because the budgets or we don't know? Yeah, what we have seen is that there are different profiles of students. There are some students that seems to be very motivated by, by these elements. Also, with, with some interviews uh, in a qualitative research that, that we did, they, they say, oh, this is very nice to have these badges and, and all of this. Uh, but there are other students that with these metrics seems not to be motivated. For example, they are solving exercises, but, and they do correctly. But for example, they don't solve all the exercise of a set to obtain a badge. So in this case, um, these students seem uh, not to be motivated by the budgets, but only by, by solving correct exercises. Indeed, I think the, the gamification elements is, is one of, of, of the better things for, for obtaining motivation. And um, in th these measures, 
many of these measures uh, can only be applied to, to this specific environment. But if we move to another environment with other gamification uh, setup, then other measures uh, should be proposed. 